Good morning. Happy Sunday. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me once again uh, on this platform. Thank you to all our new subscribers. Thank you also to all of you who are joining us on the prayer line uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for yielding yourself to God, um, especially in this difficult season uh, or difficult times. Um, God bless you. I, I know that you are being blessed. Um, and so don't forget to invite others. And also if you're, um, if you're watching this video and you have not yet subscribed and you come back week after week, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and press the subscribe button and make sure that you also comment and like the video because it helps to give it momentum on YouTube um, so that it can reach the souls who are in need of the word that the Lord is saying to us in this season. So don't let's keep the blessing to ourselves. So let's share, okay? God bless you. And today I want to bring um, a prophetic word from the Lord. He says, how bad do you want what you've been praying for? Yeah, mm -hmm. that is a question today. <laughs> that is a question. How bad do you want what you've been praying for? And so the Lord led me to the book of John chapter five. And this is a story that we all know. It's the story of the man at the pool of Bethesda. And in chapter five of the book of John, if you will open there with me, it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, alt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole at whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Hmm. The impotent man answered him and said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it bef down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Now Bethesda in Hebrew means house of mercy. It means house of grace. And so this pool was thought to have healing power. But only the first person that jumps into the pool after the angel of the Lord had stirred it gets healed. And so in verse 5, this was a man who had been sick for 38 years. He encountered Jesus at this pool of mercy, at this pool of grace this day. And Jesus asked him, knowing he had been in that situation for so long, for 38 years, he said to him, will thou be made whole? Almost as if to say, do you want to be made whole? Do you really want to be made whole? Do you really want your situation to change? Are you sure you haven't parked and made your condition a crutch to not move forward or become all that you've been created to be? That is the question for you and I today. Are you are you really, are you really ready? Are you really sure about what you're praying for? Uh, or, or do you want it badly enough that you would do whatever it takes to get it? That you would do whatever it takes to seek the face of God until he answers you. Hear now how this man answered in verse seven. Verse seven, he responded with an excuse. As a matter of fact, two excuses he gave Jesus. He said, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. 
And then in number two, he says, I can't move fast enough to get in so someone else always gets in before me. <laughs> oh, the Bible's talking about infirmities. It doesn't mean just physical illness. Sometimes it can be physical, sometimes it can be mental weakness. It is a form of disability of the mind and of the physical. My goodness. These excuses were coming from a man who had been at the pool for 38 years. 38 years, a pool that was beside a sheep market. Which means that there are so there were so many people that could have helped him in 38 years. So many people were around. It was a market. It was a market. So Jesus had to ask, how desperate are you for your healing? He's asking you the same today. How desperate are you for that change that you desire? How desperate are you for the answers to the prayers you've been praying? Oh, how desperate are you to achieve that dream or that goal to move forward, to go to the next level in every area of your life? Are you just like this man still making excuses? Have you somehow allowed yourself to be talked out of hope and faith and trust in yourself and in God? Are you like this man camping out next to your opportunities and failing to make a move? Yes, the Holy Spirit is asking us questions this morning. I know this is different for you, but I'm telling you this is going to be important in you getting into your next level, in you tapping into everything that God has for you. But in spite of his excesses, Jesus being Jesus, <laughs> oh, Jesus being Jesus decided to have compassion on him. In verse 8 to 9, Jesus told him to rise and to take his crutch, I mean his bed. Yes, my goodness. That word is for someone today. You've made your situation a crutch. You've made your situation a reason to, to, to tell a sob story about what you've been through and what's happened to you. Leave the past in the past. God has been dealing with us about that in the last few weeks, several weeks. Leave the past in the past. Let go of your past, he says. Let go of your past failures and errors and mistakes. It is it's time for you to move forward. Everyone on this platform, if you are connected to this platform, you have to move forward. Unless you are just coming here to be a spectator and to find out what is wrong and what I am saying. Yes, if you are truly connected to this platform, you must move forward. You must advance. You must be great. The greatness inside of you must come forth. It must come forth and the time, oh Jesus, the time. Time is now, said the spirit of the living God. So we're reading and talking about a man who has made his situation, his identity. His situation had become his crutch. His situation had stagnated him. His story might have gotten him a few coins or donations. Yes, and your story might have gotten you a few pats on your back. Oh, it might have gotten him some change. Yes, you made that problem your identity. It is time for you to switch into the true identity that God has given you. You keep going around saying, but I've been praying. Are you really ready for what you've been praying? for. That's what the spirit of God is asking us today. Uh, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? But when he encountered the savior, he encountered the savior, his story changed, his life changed, his excuses vanished. He had to take action. He had to take action. Jesus told them, arise and take your bed. Take that situation and walk and begin to do what you are supposed to do and begin to move forward. 38 years in the same problem. He had, he, he no longer had to wait for an angel to stir the water. 
Mm -hmm. He no longer had to wait for someone to give him an opportunity. He no longer had to wait. The king of kings was standing before him. The great physician himself came to visit him. Oh, and every story of hopelessness and helplessness he had told himself was overwritten. It was overwritten by the grace and the mercy of God. It was overwritten right there at the house of mercy. He was sitting in the house of mercy and couldn't tap into it. He was sitting in the house of grace for 38 years and couldn't do nothing. He was was made whole. You also must be made whole. He received a new life. You also must receive a new life today. His hope was restored. You also must have your hope restored today. The man at the pole could have had his moment a long time before then. Before the time he had Jesus standing right in front of him. But he wasn't ready. He probably prayed every day but he didn't take any steps. He said, before I get there, someone else gets in. And before I could get the job, someone else got it. So you look for another one. So you keep on searching. So you keep on looking. When I was working on my doctorate degree, working on my dissertation, it took a long time. And I'm sharing this testimony for the first time here on this platform. It took a long time. It took years. But at every roadblock, I cried to God. I fought for, for it like my life depended on it. Because there were part of my assignment that depended on me completing that assignment, completing that thing that God had placed in my heart to, to achieve. I wanted to give up so many times. There were times that I was hopeless. There wasn't anyone to help me. There was, it didn't look like there was a way out. I worked, I prayed, I fasted. But God made a way every time because I didn't give up. Because he told me to complete, to finish what I started. And I made up my mind to do so. And every time there was an obstacle, I went back to him. And it wasn't easy. It didn't happen right away, but God made a way. If it took months and weeks, I knew he was coming. Oh, and it was coming big. How bad do you want what you've been praying for? I wanted that. I wanted to complete this, this uh, 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 level of education so bad because God told me it was something I had to do. That was part of my purpose. And he was using the process to prepare me. My God. He was using the process to strengthen me. Every challenge that I faced was there to show me who God truly was. And now you can't tell me that God is not faithful. Everything that has happened in my life, the good, the bad, the ugly, has been for the glory of God. It's been to strengthen and encourage me and increase my faith. Faith is a muscle. We all have to exercise it or it will be just weak. It will be weak. Whatever you do not work or exercise weakens. It withers away. So also is faith. I had to determine and decide how bad do I want what I've been praying for. I knocked on every door that I knew to knock on. And when it seemed like my, my, uh, uh, my ability ended, God's strength was made perfect. Mm. The Bible says that strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. In your weakness, if strength is made perfect, how bad do you want what you've been praying for? I can tell you till I'm blue in the face what God is going to do. 
but what about what you have to do? No, we're not on this platform just asking God to do everything. God is teaching us how we must take charge of what he has already given us, how we must be good stewards of his blessings. And to understand that it, just because he said he has done it or he's blessed us doesn't mean we're not going to have to fight for it. Doesn't mean we're not going to have to fast for it. Doesn't mean we're not going to have to pray for it. Doesn't mean we're not going to be, have to be determined in the face of obstacle to climb that mountain or have that mountain be made plain. To stand even when it is difficult to stand. To pray even when it is difficult to pray. To fast even when it is difficult to fast. To work even when it is difficult to work. I'm going to share my testimony in, in details at another time. <laughs> oh, amazing grace. That's all I have received is mercy. I'm not sitting here a perfect person. No, mercy found me. God's grace found me. And that grace is extended to you today. This man received what he had sat there for 38 years waiting on in a twinkle of an eye. All it takes is one encounter with heaven. All it takes is one encounter with Jesus. All it takes is one encounter with the power of God. I decree over you today concerning every limiting and crippling situation in your life. May you encounter God like never before in the name of Jesus. May you experience a supernatural turnaround in the name of Jesus. Every limiting and crippling thought that had held you bound vanish now in the name of Jesus. It is written the strangers shall fail, fade away and be afraid out of their close places Therefore, every thought or imagination that exalts itself above the word of God and the promises of God for your life today in the name of Jesus, we make them obedient to Christ uh, and I take them captive today and send them back to the pit of hell where they belong in the name of Jesus. As from today, receive the grace to move forward speedily in the name of Jesus. Let every band of limitation that the enemy has placed on you or that you have placed on yourself be broken forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear me. I decree today in the name of Jesus, every band of limitation that the enemy has placed on you or that you, you, you have placed on yourself be broken forever in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree over you, go and do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Go and and be all that God has created you to be in the name of Jesus. It is not all going to be clear to you in the moment. Just take one step after the other. Just do one thing after the other. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that you want it bad. Bad enough to seek the face of the creator. Bad enough to seek the face of the giver. To not just only be focused on the gift, but to be focused on the giver. The Giver of all good things. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. And if you're yet to give your life to him today, your time is now. Your time is now. Your day is today. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory. We honor you for you are God alone. Oh, and there is none like you, none like you, none like you, Jesus. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I know this is a longer video, but God bless you for sticking with me. And make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you like it. Make sure that 
and you comment down below. Make sure you don't forget the prayer line. Also, make sure you share prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you all. Have a wonderful new week. God bless you.